There are seven key phases of software development models, from planning to maintenance. Not every model will use each phase, or in the same order, and some models are iterative, so phases may be repeated multiple times. The planning phase can be further divided into identifying requirements and analyzing feasibility. General tasks in the planning phase include defining the project's purpose and goals, identifying stakeholders and their needs, estimating time, cost and resources, creating a project timeline or schedule, and assigning roles and responsibilities. As part of planning, requirements are also to be identified. Tasks include gathering information from users and stakeholders, defining what the software must do. This is known as functional requirements. Setting performance, security, and usability expectations. This is known as non-functional requirements. And creating requirement documents for approval. Also as part of planning, the project must be assessed in terms of feasibility. Tasks include analyzing if a project is technically possible, checking if it's cost effective and worth doing, assessing if the team has the right skills and access to suitable tools, and evaluating risks and how to reduce them. The design phase is when developers begin to plan what the software may look like and how data will flow between components. They will need to plan the software architecture, how the project will be structured, design user interfaces, what users will actually see, create data models and system diagrams, and choose the appropriate technologies and tools that will be used. After designing the software, the next phase is to begin creating it. Tasks include writing the actual code, developing databases and system components, integrating different parts of a system, and following coding standards and best practices. Testing the system may be a separate phase, or it could be built into the construction phase to check components work as they're being created. In this phase, programmers will check for bugs or errors in the code, test if the software meets the original requirements, perform different types of testing and input validation checks, and fix any issues found during testing. Also known as the deployment phase, there are three main ways that a new system can be delivered. This can be through phased, parallel, or big bang implementation. With a phased implementation, the new system is introduced gradually, one part at a time. Advantages of this are that it's easier to manage and fix issues as users can adapt to changes slowly. However, it takes longer to fully switch over and there may be compatibility issues between the old and new systems. A phased implementation is best for large systems where gradual change is safer. With parallel implementation, both the old and new systems run at the same time for a period. The main advantage of this is safety, as if the new system fails, the old one should still work. However, it can be expensive and time-consuming to have a double workload. Parallel implementation is best for high-risk environments where reliability is critical. With Big Bang, also known as Crash, implementation, the old system is switched off and replaced by the new system all at once. This is quick and simple to roll out, however it's risky as if there are problems with the new system, there's no backup. It is best for small systems or when time is limited and the risk is low. The purpose of a penultimate phase is to create documentation that can help users navigate the system, as well as resources to aid developers with any future maintenance. Tasks include writing user manuals and guides, documenting how the system works for developers, and keeping records of decisions, designs, and any changes. The final phase for many software development models is an ongoing period of maintenance to improve the software and fix any identified security risks. In this phase, developers will fix bugs found after release, update software to meet new needs, improve performance or security, and provide ongoing user support. Most modern software development models, such as Agile and RAD, are not linear. Instead, the phases may interact, iterate, and overlap. With interaction, one phase may rely on feedback or input from another phase. For example, in the Agile model, testing may influence the next round of design. Phases often iterate and are repeated as needed to improve the software. For example, refining requirements after user feedback. And phases can overlap meaning that they happen at the same time. For example, coding and testing may run together in sprints in the Agile model. Interaction between phases and iteration is important as it allows for flexibility as requirements can be changed or improved based on real-time feedback. Early testing and constant updates reduce risk and chance of failures. Teams are encouraged to collaborate across phases rather than in isolation. Working software may be delivered in part so users can see results sooner, and problems may be spotted and fixed early and not left until the end, in contrast to a more rigid system like the waterfall model.